Hi everyone, <clears throat> welcome to Production Operations Management. Uh, in this video, we are going to demonstrate the use of weighted moving averages for Chapter 4 forecasting. Uh, so, weighted moving averages takes the weighted average of the past historical values to determine the forecast. So, you have to determine the weights first for the, the past periods. Now, in this video, we are going to use the three month weighted moving average so we will have three weights and each weight is going to be allocated to one of the historical data so for example let's just start with giving a weight of one third for each each historical data and one third one third and one third and the the sum, the total has to be one. So if you're using two month weighted moving average, you, your sum has to be one. For example, you can use 0 0.4, 0 0.6. If you have four month weighted moving average, etc., you'll have to use four different weights, uh, adding up to one. Uh, as uh, in here, we are just using three. Now what we have to do is uh, we are going to just now calculate the forecast using the three uh, month uh, weighted moving average. So we are going to just multiply each weight where the, the last one is going to be for the most recent uh, month and multiply the weights by the months. So we will have the weight three times December actually here at 14 here plus weight 2 times November plus weight 1 times October and after that I wanted to just use the same weights uh, that means I don't want to move these uh, I just want to freeze them so for J2 3 and 4 I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the numbers. Okay. And then it makes 16. And we go up to April and all these values. Now I deliberately chose the same weights. And if you look at these numbers and the numbers for the moving averages, you are seeing that the numbers are the same. Okay. So that means because if we have the same weights, we are just taking an average. That means the, the moving average is just a special case of, of the weighted moving average where the weights are, the, are equal to each other. I can change the weights. For example, I can just put the weight of 0.2, but I have to make sure that my sum adds up to 1. Weight 2, I can make 0.5 and 0.3. Is this better than the moving average? So how, I, how would I determine the weights that are the best so that I have a better forecasting method? So first, let's just calculate the MAD value. We are going to just find the deviation. And the deviation is the sales data minus the forecast. <coughs> And then we are going to find the absolute deviations as we did in moving averages. And we'll take the average. Uh, your job is to find the other error measures as well when you are submitting this work. So my MAD is 6.24. Let's just say maybe weight 1 is 0, weight 2 is 0, weight 3 is 1. 3.67. Look at here. 6.48. So <clears throat> it tells me something. It says that the naive method is better because just use the most recent period. Do not put any other weight. So do not uh, consider uh, the two or three months before when you are determining the past period. So in this case, uh, it gives me a smaller error size. This is a better method. But is there a better weight combination? 
So in order to find a better uh, weight combination, we are going to use another tool that we are going to use in the future uh, more uh, in, uh, in detail. But what I want to do is I want to just uh, activate that tool which is not uh, in Excel uh, normally. So here I have it, it's called Solver. But you, if you go to Data tab, and if you haven't used Solver before, you are not going to use, uh, see that in there. To see that, what I'm going to do is, you have to just uh, one by one, just click on, press on on your keyboard Alt, and then T, and then I. So you don't uh, press them all together, just one by one, Alt T and I. If you are using a Mac computer, then you have to just Google how to activate the solver, and I do not know that. I'm a poor guy, I don't have a Mac computer. Just joking. Uh, Alt, T, and I. If you do that, you get all these add-ins, and click on the solver add-in, and click OK. And under the data tab, the solver would be there. So once the solver is there, I just gonna click on solver. Now there are some things to use in the solver. What we wanna do is we want to get this MAD the smallest possible. So I click on MAD as my objective and I wanna minimize it. Okay? I wanna minimize my MAD value and in order to minimize the MAD value, I need to change the weights, the green numbers, by changing the three values here, okay? And uh, we are telling Excel that change those three numbers, but make sure that the sum adds up to one. We have a formula here, it says summation formula. What we are going to do is we are going to add a constraint in Excel, say that, click on add, and we are going to say that this cell, Excel, has to be equal to 1. Then we click OK. Not add, just OK. And once you have this set up, do not change anything else. Just click on Solve. And Solver found a solution. It looks like this is the best solution. Let me just delete the weights and maybe put the, the weights as 0 0.3, 0 0.5, and 0.2 and I will go to solver again and solve it one more time and solver found the solution. It's interesting, it's not always uh, this case but for this data set it's a good idea to use a naive method just look at your past value and just uh, use it as your forecast for the future then you are you have the best method. So what we are going to say is for January, uh, we are expecting the sales to be 14 instead of 16 because we have a smaller error size. And I want you to uh, you, uh, just work on this and do the same steps. Also, find the MSE and MAPD as well. Okay, thanks for watching.